Analyst for Different Partnership. And that uh, lofty post gives me the uh, distinct honor of welcoming you all here tonight. Thank you all for coming. Such a beautiful Minneapolis day. And uh, we also would like to thank our uh, partners, Grayco and Gray Plant Luthi, and our 27 sponsors, because we wouldn't be here without them. So maybe we could just give them a round of applause. And we have a number of elected officials here tonight. I will try to uh, see if I can, I can uh, recognize them all. I know that Minneapolis City Council, people, Jacob Fry, uh, Long Bang are here. Kevin Wright may be coming. Uh, Linda Higgins is here, Diane Loeffler. I saw Ray Den and Joe Mullery and Park Board Commissioners Anita Tad, John Irwin, Scott Greenland, and Park Board Superintendent Jane Miller. Thank you all for honoring us with your presence. We appreciate it. My major job is to introduce our uh, keynote speaker, Mayor Betsy Hodges. She has been a force in this city for some time, serving on the Minneapolis City Council for eight years, and she was known as being very budget savvy. And what she did was manage to make this city work without all of us suffering from bigger property taxes. So I think that's to be commended. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, we are, uh, now she is mayor, the 47th mayor of Minneapolis. It's kind of a lofty thing, isn't it? And uh, she has really uh, brought a focus to this uh, job of growing the city and making sure that that growth happens and is to the benefit of all. We, we particularly appreciate that on the Minneapolis Riverfront Partnership because as we look at this very diverse Minneapolis Riverfront, we see the beautiful Lower Gorge, we see the Central Riverfront, which has become this incredible magnetic neighborhood, and then we see the Upper River above St. Anthony Falls and how much potential there is there and how uh, that potential needs to be realized to benefit the folks who live up river. So uh, we are particularly happy to have you here and thank you for coming.
that or not. Um, the fact that people can visit downtown and not know that they are near the river is one of the things that together we are going to correct. It's one of the things that together we are going to correct. We have had generations. We have had generations <coughs> shaping this city, um, but it started with generations on the river. And what can we do with the river? And it's the 21st century. We no longer have the, you know, the 20th century uses for the river. Um, the 20th century relationships with the river uh, got moved us forward, but also created some challenges. And certainly the, you know, the 19th century um, uses for the river. Um, those are our history. That's our beginnings. Uh, but now we get to reimagine ourselves for the 21st century. And so we think about, I mean, you know, and as Linda was saying, there's the, you know, there's the lower court, the beauty that is there, the experience that people have when they are there. I mean, how many of us have taken people there when we want to show them the best of Minneapolis and the fact that we are, as, as is often said, we are a city and a park. How often have we taken people there to show them what beauty uh, in our city can be um, and what other cities don't have? which we are proud to tell, uh, tell people what other cities don't have and show them there. <laughs> and in recent years, how proud are we of the revitalization um, in you know, the central river? And all the, I mean, we're standing in some of them, right? We are standing in the uh, increasing recognition of what it means to have a downtown that's right on the river. And what do we get to do to make sure that any of the barriers that we have between ourselves and the river, whether they be infrastructure barriers, because sometimes Washington is that barrier, whether they be mental barriers, we are going to be creating as we, you know, as we create Nicollet Mile, part of the intention there is to connect to, to the river and for, to have people know that they are in a river city. Uh, whether they are any kinds of barriers that we have are being broken down day after day with every project that we have. Um, here in downtown and other parts of the central, you know, other parts of the central riverfront, you know, the things that are happening on the other side of the river, these powerful, powerful projects that are happening there. It's been amazing to see. And so, how many of us, especially those of us uh, who are so dedicated to our riverfront, how many of us have taken people uh, downtown and walked? Look, we have path right along the river, right downtown. Look what we're going to imagine on Denver Hall. Come to the Mill City Museum. Let's go to the Guthrie and stand overhead. Hey, you want to live on the river? Because we have all this great condo space. We have all these great apartments coming up. Huge opportunity. But the biggest opportunity we have as a city is on the upper river. That that is going to be a testament from this generation to the next of the imagination that we have for our city, not just for the above the falls. The fact that uh, you all have the plan, um, that, and I give great, uh, great credit to the, to the park board, I give great credit to the council members, especially those who've been representing the river over time, uh, council member uh, Johnson, council member Wright, council member Fry, I know that Diane Hostet is here, and her dedication uh, to the river, uh, so, so important and key in her time of service. Um, that imagination has been there. We have created a beautiful vision and a beautiful future. And what we owe to the next generation is making that real and making that come true. And you all in this room are the people who know that. And you all in this room are the people who are dedicated to being part of the partnership to make that happen and move it forward. One of the key opportunities we have is the Upper Harbor Trail. The city owns the site of Antoa. We, uh, you know, with the lock and down closure, we now have you know, a piece of property that can be a testament to our commitment to the next generation, as well as a testament to our commitment to the north side, our commitment to having resident access to the river uh, far more easily than we have it now. It's not an easy thing. There's a highway there, Tom Johnson's highway. You know you're talking about something different than Tom Johnson's highway. Um, you know, the, the highway doesn't make it an easy proposition to connect people to the river. You all know that. I'm, I'm, but we have the opportunities that we have, we must take. Dowling goes right to the upper harbor terminal. It is a huge opportunity. 
We don't quite know yet exactly what we can do there, but we need to figure it out. And as a city, that's why I put in my budget $250,000 for planning. So we can figure out what the capital investments are that the city needs to make to incent other people making capital investments there. But whatever happens, we know that we want Parkway. We want Park there. We want Parkway there. Meaning we want people to be able to be connected um, by bike. We want that riverfront, that natural amenity. The things that we have in South Minneapolis, the thing that we are increasingly having downtown, we want to make sure that we have them there as well. And one of the first inroads we're going to have there is Upper Harbor Terminal. And that investment is, is so crucially important. But this is all the result of the community engagement process. This is all the result of people coming together and having that vision. And like I said, I appreciate so much what the Park Board and the Park Board Commissioners have done, what you as a community have done to come together and say, this is where we want to go together, to have the linkages to the riverfront, to have those off-street trail projects along 18th Avenue North East, 26th Avenue North, which are you know, funded in our community involvement programs, and longer term like the county led work on Lowry Avenue Northeast to reimagine a major corridor. All of these are potential inroads to finding those connections and making all of the river in Minneapolis sort of the lively public amenity, the lively connection, and the incredible resource that it can be uh, for everybody in the city, but also for the people who visit us. It's the imagination that we have been showing as a community and it's our job to make sure that take that to the next level and make it reality. Uh, to have that experience, you know, when people think about Theodore Worth and the vision that he had, a lot of times when you're in Minneapolis, it takes a while to realize that not every city had the imagination that the city of Minneapolis had in the 19th century about how we wanted our open space to be in the city of Minneapolis. And not everybody connects that vision and that acting on that <coughs> vision with the city that we've been able to build uh, today as we are. It's that kind of vision that we have in this plan here. That if we do it right, there's going to be generations that follow us that will just see it as, well, of course you can. Of course that's the way it is. Of course we have these connections to the It's amazing they, you know, they had to do that, but, but of course they did that. They're going to applaud the vision. They may not know any of our names, but they are going to know their city. And the last thing I will say is the biggest gift of this work, especially on the upper the biggest gift that we're going to be able to give to the next generation is the fact that it's one of the ways that we have to reduce the inequalities we have in the city. Because that's the biggest legacy we can give the next generation. We have the biggest disparities between white people and people of color of any city in the country. And that plays itself out in who has access to the water, who has access to our river, river and who has access to those amenities. And these are the opportunities we have, not to just create that for our entire city, which it is, but to create create those opportunities for North Minneapolis and the residents of North Minneapolis. And that's going to begin to change our community. That's going to begin to change our entire community. So I never, ever underestimate how important it is. Uh, never underestimate the role of this river, not only in the history of the city of Minneapolis, but for the future of the city of Minneapolis. Everything we care about, everything we want for ourselves is going to play itself out on this river front. And we are the people to do it. We, you, all of us together, excuse me, I'm sick, I did that for All of us together, we are the people to do it. We are the people to make it happen. I, am, I picked the right time to be mayor, I have to say. Or frankly, you all picked it for me. Thank you very much. Um, you all picked it for me. Um, I could give a list of so many of the exciting projects that are happening. I will refrain from doing that because I have a feeling others, you know, others can do that list. But we know, I mean, Life Source, um, Psycho Susie's, I just want to say Psycho Susie's. <laughs> um, you know, the old Green Belt office building, uh, used in comfort technologies, I mean, just so many great projects happening. Y'all, we are the ones who can do this for our city. The green space that is so important. See David Wilson sitting there. If I don't say green space three times, I get uh, I get a little nervous. So green space, green space, green space. We're all good. But but this is this is about our health as a community as well. Our physical health and access to green space 
and our community and spiritual health in terms of the city that we are building for ourselves and our future. So we are in the 21st century. We are acting like we are in the 21st century. And the proof of that is going to be made manifest in the years to come. And we're going to be doing that together. So happy, happy annual meeting. This is a great place to be tonight. And I thank you for the opportunity uh, to tell you how great you are. And I'll find out later, Sally, if I passed. <laughs> Very much. Um, it's perfect. I would like to introduce Kathleen Bow, who is the executive director of the Minneapolis Riverfront Partnership. And um, if you wonder who we are, well, she's here to help help clarify that. So uh, she's going to take a few minutes, and then we will get to the films. Kathleen. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. It's great to be here. I'm excited to see the films in a few minutes also. And Mayor Hodges, thank you for being here tonight. Your presence just affirms how important the Mississippi River and revitalization of the riverfront is to our community and the goals that you've established for our community. I'm going to talk briefly about the Minneapolis Riverfront Partnership and also our signature work, the Riverfront Vitality Project. The partnership was created by civic leaders to facilitate the revitalization of the riverfront in our city of Minneapolis. We are the one organization that really brings diverse interests together with the goal of shaping a vital role for, many, for the Mississippi River in both the social and natural life of the city, at the same time ensuring that the development benefits all segments of our community. So we focus on three areas. The first is informing, and that's where the Riverfront Vitality Project comes in. That's our core work, and we're expanding, we're using that to expand and deepen the community's understanding of riverfront plans and progress. This year, we made, from the Riverfront Vitality Project, we launched the Riverfront Vitality Forums. The first with a panel discussion on the future of the Upper Harbor Terminal, which Betsy was talking about a few minutes ago. The goal of these forums is to convene diverse groups to help shape the decisions critical to creating a truly vibrant riverfront community. So look for our next forum in January on the Minneapolis without a lock. <coughs> Engaging. This river is really a treasured resource, I think, to everyone in this room. Um, so we want everyone in this community to feel the same passion for the river that we do. We bring people to areas of the river that are less well known or newly developed. Last summer, we held an event at Sheridan Memorial Park, which is just north of the Grain Belt Brewery. It's the newest park in the Minneapolis park system along the river. And we had a thousand people show up at that event. And I figured that's close to a thousand people who didn't know that park was there before. So it's, it's a great, great thing to do. And finally, accelerating through focused action and investment in specific segments of the riverfront, we're speeding the process of revitalization in areas north of the St. Anthony Falls. That's our special focus. Before you leave tonight, Please pick up a copy of our second annual Riverfront Vitality Report at the MRP table way over there. This project was launched because we thought it was important to provide easy access to indicators of what is and also what is not happening with riverfront revitalization throughout our city. With your input, we chose a balanced set of indicators, economic health, environmental health, riverfront access and cultural resources because we saw that it's really important to pay attention to all of these factors to have truly vibrant riverfront revitalization. So the central riverfront where we are today is a good example of this. In this area, regional park visits have increased by over 250% in the last 10 years. Care has been given to historic assets in this area, including the iconic Stone Arch Bridge. This Mill City Museum celebrated its 10th anniversary just last year 
and the Guthrie is just eight years old. That's hard for me to believe. It feels like it's, it, it's an institution there now. So as riverfront access and cultural resources have developed in this area, we've seen a corresponding improvement in economic health. The percentage, for example, of citywide property tax revenue, so this is citywide property tax revenue, that's derived from the central riverfront area alone is up by 6% in the past 10 years. So imagine the potential as we extend this riverfront revitalization above St. Anthony Falls to the northern regions of the city. So this year, a bit about the riverfront vitality report that we released this year, as we, as we began looking at trends in the indicators, we were surprised at a couple of things. We are seeing the development of park space along the riverfront above St. Anthony Falls. The percent of river adjacent to parks and public space has increased by 35% in the last 10 years and 6% in the last year alone. So that new Sheridan Memorial Park, which I mentioned a minute ago, and also the public space that's been developed behind the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization have made that 6% happen. So transformation is happening along the northern reaches of the river. Uh, Mayor Hodges mentioned Psycho Susie's, but we, Psycho Susie's is building a Ferris wheel across from the office that I work. So if you haven't driven up Marshall Street lately, uh, take a drive up there. It's truly a sight to behold. Uh, for more than 100 years, city planners have envisioned that both sides of the Mississippi River that like both sides of the Mississippi River will be lying for parks and open space throughout our city. We, along with many of you in this room, are dedicated to helping you realize that. So please do pick up a copy of the report tonight, and we welcome your comments. So now the film festival. This has been great fun to put together. Meg Forney is tonight's master of ceremonies. Meg is the vice chair on the board of the Minneapolis River Park Partnership, and is also a commissioner for the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. She's a realtor who understands the transformative nature of open space in our urban environment and how it enhances everyone's quality of life. She was an original member of AFCAP. But if you ask Meg what she does, the first thing that she's going to tell you is that she is a rower. And it's this passion for rowing on the river that makes her connection to our organization real. So it's great fun to work with her. Meg Forney. Based on the response, I would predict our board may do it again next fall. So keep in mind over the upcoming year, keep the ideas churning, swelling, flooding, and flowing. Our great judges for this competition were Jesse Bishop, Programming Manager of the Film Society of Minneapolis-St. Paul. The Film Society hosts the annual International Film Festival in April and may even feature these films that we'll love to see. Ben Hayward, Executive Director of The Soap Factory. The Soap Factory formally held their second film festival, and they might even show our films too. Brenda Langman, Chef and Restaurateur of Spoon River Restaurant. Brenda also founded the Mill City Farmer's Market. Wonderful. Um, Sarah McKenzie, editor of not only the Downtown Journal, but also the Southwest Journal. Tom Meyer, founding principal of Meyer Shear and Rock Gaston Limited. Um, is one of the early visionaries of the riverfront and also serves on our board. Thank you all for your time, perspectives, and especially for your enthusiasm. Now on to the awards. The judges were so impressed with the entries 
they pulled out a few honorable mentions. Please hold your applause until we get to the winners towards the end. We want to take a photo at the end of our event of all of the, all who participated in this contest. The honorable mentions are Spirits of the Winter River by Roy Sorensen. Hey! I've been feeding this guy for 11 years now. That's a good place for you to eat. This is a white-faced orange feet Canada goose hybrid of some kind. There he comes. God, that's cutting it close, buddy. Senate aide to Senator Amy Klobuchar, and I am here in the Upper St. Anthony Falls Lock in Minneapolis, going through the lock for the first time in my life. That's cool. When I was a Senate aide, I actually worked on legislation that will close this lock. It needs to be closed because of uh, invasive species called collectively Asian carp that will really impact the outdoor recreation opportunities in Minnesota. Closing it is essentially just shutting the gates. We're not going to tear it down when we have the science and the ability to slow down or kill the carp, we can open it back up. So this isn't just a lock, it's also a national park, but this could be turned into the visitor center for the Mississippi River National Recreation Area, which would be really cool. I think that would be amazing to have that right in the middle of the city. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but 
The judge's comments were that interesting to document the lies. This definitely stands out from the rest. An informative and concise document about the changing river and a specific effort to control invasive species. Now on to the judge's selections of runners up. First of all, we have the Upper Harbor Terminal. River Wind Canoe by John Gilbridge and Sam Spencer. When Father Louis Hennepin came to Minnesota in 1680 with his friends, the Dakota Sioux, he stopped here on the banks of the Mississippi River. Why did he stop here? Because he was thirsty. But after he had quenched his thirst, he looked around and he said to himself, Hey, this is a great spot for a public park. It is a perfect place to make fine adult beverages an institution where young people can drink them. Here I can send invitations to all my friends back in France. They will need some place to work. How about a shit metal factory and a dark and quiet place where they can get some sleep in the evenings? This place has it all. I think I shall call it Minneapolis. Yes, if it wasn't for Father Hennepin, this stretch of river would be dull and uninteresting, just like the rest of the Mississippi. <laughs> And the judge's comments, entertaining and unique. Humorous history and high production value to point out our uh, riverfront landmarks. On to the lower board, we have as a runner-up is Mississippi Tribute by Mark Bryan.
judges' comments, beautifully filmed ode to Minnehaha Falls and the Creek's journey to the Mississippi. And now on to the winners. Each winner, please come up to the stage to receive your award as I announced you. The Upper Harbor Terminal, our winner is Summer of 1975 by David Tinton and Josh Zenon. Please join me. It's the mighty Mississippi, twice the S's of Missouri. Yes, it has a lot of S's, and it has a lot of I's. It's the mighty Mississippi, drains the water of a nation, takes that water on a journey to the Gulf of Mexico. It's the mighty Mississippi, it's a very special neighbor. You can walk right up and touch it, and I think that's pretty cool. It's the mighty Mississippi, you must ever treat it nicely. It's a legend and your best friend, and it has a lot of eyes.
bound imagery of resistive wave patterns, and the final act of a Tibetan sand painting ritual in which sand is returned to the earth. We are left to imagine what the painting was, which leaves a wonderful little mystery hanging. On to the lower gorge. The winter is an evening on the Mississippi with Minneapolis Rowing Club by Lisa Olmsted.
judge's comments were, the peace of the river at night is captured. Tranquil, serene, and there is a unique and international vision demonstrated in this piece. That's our river. This concludes our Mississippi Minute Film Festival. Thanks to all who participated. At the end of our presentations here, we'd like to take a group photo of all who participated in the film festival. And now, I'll turn it back to our board president, Linda Mann. Thank you, Meg. Thank you uh, to all of our judges, and thank you to all the filmmakers who participated. We had a very short film uh, time frame, and so we're glad that uh, you all shared your personal visions of the river. It's really fun to see the variety, and uh, we divided the river into four categories geographically to, to try to get that whole range, and I think we really succeeded at that. So uh, I'd also like to thank a couple of other people. Uh, Peter Zinner did our film editing. I don't know if he's here. Yes, Peter. Yeah. You... Yeah, Peter. Yes, thank you. A <laughs> wonderful uh, uh, contribution, really. We appreciate that. And uh, Meryl Benda did a fantastic job on our PR. Uh, what a whiz. We are so grateful. As a journalist, I missed it off. <laughs> so thank you, Meryl. <laughs> So uh, we'd like to have you join us in making waves on the Mississippi. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can come to our next event, which is a, one of the forums. It's January 22nd, and the topic is Minneapolis without a lock. We'll still have a name, of course, but there you go. Uh, and uh, then we'd like to have you uh, tell us where you'd like to uh, have us help accelerate riverfront revitalization. We have a little map over there. If you can, uh, if you have a chance, stop by, sort of put your little dot on areas of interest. If you'd like to sign up and be on our mailing list, we'd appreciate that. Of course, support us any way you can. And uh, most of all, we want to thank you for being here and uh, sharing the evening with us and sharing uh, the love of the Mississippi River. Thank you so much.